Hello and thank you everyone for being here. Um, I'm sorry, but this is going to be about testing the front end, so I, might, I know that you might have expected something interesting right after lunch, but if you happen to stay with me, well, uh, I want to explain to you, I want to show you how testing the front end shouldn't be that hard, and it actually isn't that hard, as long as you have the right mindset, you follow the right strategy, and you use the appropriate tools. I'm Adria von Coberta. I'm a senior, whatever that means, software engineer at uh, Olaluz, which is a green energy provider where we connect uh, people to the green energy. Um, I'm also one of the maintainers of Testing Library, an open source project based on testing modern web applications, and also one of the uh, co-organizers of the Vue.js meetup in my hometown in, in Barcelona. So where, this is, where this, is this talk uh, coming from? Uh, today's first talk, uh, Tim, uh, you, might have, you might remember that he said that uh, building web applications is hard, right? And, and that's true, because at some point, we, as a front-end industry, if that even exists, um, we decided that we had powerful tools, so we could ask for responsibilities to our back-end counterparts, right? So our applications grow, grew uh, in complexity, but we didn't ask for the right uh, tools or the right approach to handle that responsibility. And one of those responsibilities is testing. So if our applications are way more complex than expected, well, we should be testing them, right? So I noticed that. I knew I was doing other stuff. So I knew that I need to get into testing. First thing I did, obviously, well, I started with the testing pyramid, like, like everyone, I guess. You know, this idea of writing a lot of unit tests, some integration tests, and finally some end-to-end -end testing. Uh, but that was, that was created like 10 years ago. Um, so to be honest, it failed me, or I failed the pyramid, probably. It didn't work, and instead of thinking that, OK, testing is not for me, or that, yeah, no, testing is hard, what I did was ask myself or wonder, what were the ideas supporting the pyramid? Why, why was the pyramid there? At the end, I came up with a realization that they were asking us to write tests. That's quite obvious, right? But also, we should make them fast to run and cheap to maintain. Tests should be focused on the value they provide, and we need to run them often. So we, need, we have uh, feedback on how our application is behaving. In short, we're, we should be creating shorter and faster feedback loops for, for our app. So this talk was called Pragmatic Frontend Tester, so I want to keep things pragmatic and show you an example of what I try to do when I test my, my applications. So I'm going to ask, uh, who's using Vue usually on a? Yeah, I can see you. So yeah, raise your hand. But I can see you. But yeah, a lot of hands. No. Everyone use here, so raise your hand just in case. Yeah, great. So I'm going to show you an example, a simple component. If you ever use Vue, it's going to be so simple. If you don't, it's going to be so simple too, because it's just a counter. You know, this is view, looks great. You just have a text, you have a button, you can click the button you call the increment method, you just increment the state value, the, the, that count variable, no tricks, right? Quite simple. Since we are using view, what we do then, since we have a huge ecosystem of tools, we uh, focus on testing the, the component using the official testing library, right? So we would use view test utils. We would, you know, mount. Uh, if, you are, if you are into React, this is quite similar to uh, Enzyme. If you are into Angular, uh, kind of sorry. So you mount that counter component, and you get a wrapper in return. And then with that wrapper, you could do things such as uh, using the find method, for instance, to get an element based on its HTML class. Or you can also then, after you get the paragraph, use the text method to make sure that you click zero times is, uh, is, uh, is there. After that, well, wrapper.vm exposes you with the whole component instance, so you can call the increment method twice, because we can. And after that, you, you would just assert that uh, you click two times is there in the screen, right? It looks quite simple. Uh, this is how you test a component, so 
Thank you for coming to my TED talk. It was almost done, so you could have not stopped me, but just kidding. Let's say that we have this component, right? And then some random senior software engineer on a pull request just says that, you know, this increment method, it's, increment is like a long word, right? And it's prone to errors. Why don't you just replace it with add, right? It's, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, he's senior software engineer, so yeah, you approve these changes, you merge them. Then you manually test your component, and yep, yeah, everything keeps working. Finally, you run your test suit. Yep, the test is failing. It's failing because vm.increment no longer exists. It makes sense. This is quite important from my point of view, because this is what is called a false positive error, where uh, our test is broken, but our component is not. And this undermines our confidence in testing. This is, uh, you know, this feeling where tests just fail at random times, and you don't know why, and you cannot explain why, and we all know that selling the whole testing idea, even among our peers, and not to talk about business people, is quite difficult, so we want to avoid that scenario, right? So the question here is, what went wrong? What happened? How did we end up here? The answer to that question is that our test became uh, what it's called a different consumer. And I know what you might be thinking, a different what? Yeah, OK. So to answer this question, we need to take a step back and first realize uh, or answer, what is a test? So a test, in general, it's simply a set of inputs passed into a function that will get a uh, set of outputs in return, and then we need to match our expectations against those outputs, right? This is what the test looks like. In the front end, well, the whole thing still holds true, right? We don't use functions. We do use functions, but we usually call them components, right? In the end, components just boil down to functions, so it is the whole same thing. The same mental model still applies. The question here is, what are our inputs and our outputs on, on our front end applications? Or put it in another way, who's emitting those inputs and who's receiving those outputs? This question can be answered once we realize that our code has two users. First of them, well, the end user, obviously, the person or the people who, are, or who are we, we are building the application for, or who are going to get value from it. But also the developer. The developer is also using our code, right? Another teammate might import our component, or even yourself. So you are your own code consumer. Yep. So those are the users who are going to provide us with inputs and who are going to expect some outputs. So about inputs, what are the inputs that we might get? From a development uh, point of view, well, in a UI component, we might get props or attributes or whatever, and also data streams, right? You know, subscriptions and so on. And from an end user point of view, well, the inputs are going to be interactions, you know, clicking, typing, scrolling, all, the, all those kind of actions. And what about the outputs? Well, the outputs from a development side, uh, we've called them side effects, but with that, I mean HTTP requests, cookies, local storage, a, I don't know, console logs, for instance, all those kind of things that go beyond the component boundaries. And from a user, uh, end user perspective, well, the output is just DOM elements, right? This is why we use Vue, React, Felt, and so on, just to render things on a, on a screen. So this is quite obvious once you realize about that. But you know, 99% of times, that's everything you want to focus on when testing UI components. And it's quite simple once you have this on screen, but it took me a while to realize about, yeah, longer than I'm willing to admit on public. So, in short, we get props, data streams, and user interactions, and we generate, or we need to expect, side effects and DOM nodes. Why did I tell you all of this stuff? Well, because in our test, the test that we wrote before, um, we, we called something like vm.increment or find using an HTML class. And my question here is, is the test behaving like the end user? Is it behaving like a developer? 
Well, the answer is obviously no. And uh, so the, react the, the consequence of that is that you earn, or we earn ourselves, a third user, right? We now have the end user, we have the developer, and now we have the test. So since we have a third user, we need to uh, fulfill its requirements. So now we are tied to that third user. And that's something that you want to avoid. So when I said that the test became a different consumer, what I meant is that now we need to take that test into account when refactoring, when um, just using our component. So we're here down the road, and the question is, how can I stay away from those implementation details, right? So how can I avoid creating this dreaded third user? The answer is that we need to use the appropriate tools, and this is why I'm here introducing you to the DOM te or testing library ecosystem, which is a simple and complete uh, testing suite utilities just to test several uh, everything that relies on, on the DOM in the DOM. So it is not a test runner or a framework; just builds on top of, of other tools. And uh, we have several uh, ports, and its guiding principle or the the main idea is that the more your test resemble, the way your software is used, the more confidence they can give you. This is the guiding principle of the whole library uh, written or yeah, written by Ken C. Dodge, its creator. And the informal version of that sentence is that we need to reduce the gap between the test and the user so we cannot create that third user in the middle. On top of the testing library, we have several uh, wrappers to make it simpler to use it with your favorite framework and development environments such as Cypress, for instance. So if you want to avoid implementation details, you need to use tools that help you out. So let, let me show you an example of how I would test that counter component using view testing library in this case. Notice how here we would just render the counter, not mounting, just rendering it on a deep, for instance. And this returns me a collection of utilities. In this case, I would use get by text. As you would expect, get by text pues, tries to get something by its text. So what we, would do, what we would be doing here is to assert the initial state by querying our component using a regular expression or a string. Doesn't matter. And it would get me in return the DOM node with the associated text, right? In this case, I just want to make sure that the test exists. So as long as I just need to expect that it returns something. After that, if you remember the test, we were um, incrementing the count value, right? So, but here we need to, as we said, we need to stay closer to our users. So, what we would be doing here is to uh, click on that button. I mean, we can go to our user's home and just click using its mouse, but it doesn't really scale. So, we kind of compromise here, right? What we've done is uh, well, we get the button, obviously. Notice how get by text returns me the DOM node. And this is actually a button. This is an HTML button element, right? So what we do here is we click on it as uh, close as a user would. So we fire the click event on top of the button, right? Which is roughly the same thing that a user would do with their mouse. After that, we just expect that you click two times uh, would be on a screen. Notice how the test looks quite similar to the other one, but here we are querying our component as a user would by reading its text. And also we are acting upon our component as close as possible as a user would. And there's an additional benefit to that test. If you notice, there are only two lines there which are related to view. One is obviously, well, the import statement. That's quite clear. And the other one is the render function, right? Because we are passing in a view component. Now, let's imagine that our component was written in React, for instance. This is how the test would look like. We would be importing testing library React, obviously. And then we would render it using JSX, because React. And uh, the rest of the test, well, it would look the same, because Turns out our users don't really care about our framework. They just want to make sure they can click and that the count variable increments properly. So in the end, we wrote a test that it's kind of framework agnostic, which from my point of view is beneficial. 
and also stays closer to our users. So we avoid creating this third user and we avoid uh, relying on implementation details. So DOM testing library offers all the several matches. I'm not going to go through them. You have an extensive documentation online. But I wanted to show you another one, which you know, kind of related with other talks from today, which is the get by label text. When passing in um, a label string, it gets you the associated input in return. So it's not only comfortable when testing, but also kind of asserts a certain level of accessibility in our application, which is great. So wrapping it up, and just to finish my explanation here, I want you to write tests. I, I think it makes sense, but try not to focus on quantity. Try not to focus on type. Just make sure that tests help you out. Just make sure they provide value. In the end, we want tests to sleep better at night. Inputs and outputs when testing UI components. It might be counterintuitive at the beginning, but components are just functions. So we need to provide them with inputs and expect the appropriate output. And finally, try to use tools that resemble the way your software is used, so you avoid relying on implementation details, and you avoid a dreaded third user that's going to become a nightmare at some point. If you want to start now, you have this testing testlibrary.com, which is the homepage of the project. It's an open source project, so uh, feel free to check it out. And we are open to contributions, obviously. And just remember that the important part of this is not the tools. It's about having the right mindset and following a same strategy just to make sure that your tests are helping you out and you can uh, properly introduce the idea to, to your team. That's everything I wanted to tell you about. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. It's been an honor. And feel free to stop me if you have any question around the hall. Thank you very much.